107.5 WGCI decides number one for hip hop and R and B. It's the morning show with the Destin Legend Leon Rogers, the beautiful Kendra G, myself, the shortest damn man in Chicago, Kyle. And in the wake of everything that we've been talking about with Jesse Smollett, we have some guests in the studio that want to bring light into a different uh, subject matter, man. To joining us today this morning, we have Miss Sheila Rush. Good morning, Miss Sheila. How are you? Good morning. All right, and we also have Mr. Andre Smith here. Good morning. Good morning, good morning to the radio audience. So obviously you're going to give us a little bit more details about this situation, but what we want to start with is the fact that you are, uh, you're upset. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, very unfortunately, uh, you lost your son in the streets of Chicago, and you feel as though the police didn't put the proper resources into finding out what happened with your son, and meanwhile, we're looking on TV, and they have all of these resources that are out here trying to mm. investigate whether or not Jesse Smollett orchestrated his own attack. Is that basically, uh, and, and I know it gets deeper than that, but that is, is that the general uh, summary of what we're dealing with today? Yes, that's, that's the number one thing that we're dealing with today, because uh, it, Chicago is uh, basically uh, we're known as the most violent city in Chicago. But during that time, with my son, it, it was just overwhelming at the time. So not lack of resources and the hospitals not basically having a trauma center at the time, which led to uh, a level one trauma center at the University of Chicago right now. Now, I don't take anything away from the University of Chicago because it is one of the number one richest hospitals in the United States. So during that time, when my son was uh, shot and he lost his life, it was just it was this awkward situation. Yeah. But at the same time, I thought about like why why couldn't he be treated? Uh, you know, instead of going to the unit, I mean, out to Northwestern, and that just shows lack of resources and lack of uh, prejudice in our in our communities. Before you go any further, I want you to break that down because I how you said to me because what happened with your son that night? He went to the hospital, but we said because he was older than fifteen, they wouldn't treat him. Yes, the University of Chicago has two uh, two separate parts that they deal with trauma with the with the coma. Children's Hospital, the age limit was 15, but by them not having a level one trauma center, any victim that's shot, uh, car accident, stab wound, they will have to be treated at another hospital that has a, a, a trauma center. So They had transferred him to another hospital? They transferred him to another hospital. Uh, he was a block away, and it was very heartfelt at that time, so I thought about that too. And it took six years for the universe to realize that we do need this trauma center. But, uh, Damien, but to clarify, you, you believe as though your, your son passed away because of that? Yes. Because, because of the laws. Yeah. Because, because of the, the laws yes, that they had. Yes. Because mm -hmm. if not, he would have been treated sooner. Yes. He could have got treated at Comers. Right. Yes, right. and I'm going to share a little information that I did investigating myself. During that time, uh, a resident of Chicago can go to the Chicago Police Station and get a uh, transcript copy of the ambulance ride to your uh, loved one victim and I was just curious about it because I heard a lot of stories how my son was treated what happened because I was not there and to my acknowledgement Damien was alive he was uh, told in the autopsy I mean uh, the ambulance report that he was breathing one uh, time 30 seconds so I was thinking like okay my son was alive he was fighting for his life mm -hmm. but the long ride it was just I, I just can't Too imagine much. what he was going through and then like it just just yeah. it just broke my heart. What so, year? And what year was this? This was August the fifteenth, two thousand and ten. Oh my mm. goodness! And um, during <sighs> that time, I being the person that I am, uh, I you know, um, being the person that I am, I went into media mode. Like I gotta do something. We need a trauma center. I don't want this to happen to the other mothers that come behind me. And the thing about that, no one knows the mother pain unless we experience it. So. At that time, I just we me and uh, Woodlawn community came together. Uh, Mr. Andre Smith is who here is with me today. Stands strong with me then. He stands strong with me now. And it took us six years to convince them like we need this because after that time, many other mothers lost their sons. Yeah. So when the trauma center was uh, finally um, thought of and put into action, everybody was happy. Everybody was calling me. Uh, thank you, Miss Rush, uh, for putting up. Uh, sorry you lost your son first, but Damien had to die for people's lives to be saved. That, mm. that makes me feel awesome. Definitely want you to continue with the, with the story about the trauma center. We want to bring Mr. Andre Smith into this conversation. So as soon as we take this break, we're going to come right back, and we'll definitely continue with that yes, line uh, when we come right back. It is WGCI.
We are 107.5 WGCI, the size number one for hip-hop and R&B. It's the morning show. Leon Rogers, Kendra G, myself, Kyle. We're joined this morning by two people who are uh, fighting for resources for our community. Unfortunately, uh, Miss Sheila Rush, she lost her son to gun violence back in 2010, I believe you said? Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, she believes if the resources were there like they are for this Jesse Smollett investigation, then maybe your son would still be alive. And you were telling us about how your son's death led to the fight of them bringing the trauma center to the south side. Yes. Right before we went to break. Yes. Uh-huh. So. So uh, that was a great success. And that was like something that like maybe half of my voice, half of my voice was filled. And um, bringing it up to today, I just thought about us. I, I was like, I haven't heard from the Chicago Police Department, anyone in nine years. and About um, your son's uh, death. About my son's death. Oh my suspects, God. Nothing. Um, no whatever, suspects, right. no nothing. So it's, it's technically unsolved. Yes, it's technically wow. unsolved. And by uh, David being a big part of Chicago, especially with uh, his death bringing the trauma center, you would think you would think that they would want to like reach out to me, Ms. Rush. Is there anything we can do for you? Uh, we're sorry about your loss. I haven't heard anything. So, and it was brought to my attention yesterday that they said they don't have, they refuse to comment on Damien Turner's case on Channel 5 News yesterday. And that just kind of broke me down. Like, mm. why they don't want to talk about it? Mm. This is a big issue, too. Yeah. You, you got, y'all got Jesse on TV every 30 minutes. And like today, you're going to be on TV all day long. Mm. Now, taxpayer money going to be used for his court case. And what about the people that need it? You're saying keep the same need, energy with everybody. Keep right. the same with energy with everybody. everybody. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, I think it's about, I think it's like a money thing. If you have any Dude. money, you're not a star, you don't get attention. But I'm, like I said, we are here today to, to call out everyone that has the same effect and same feeling, the same way I am, mothers all over Chicagoland to come out and, 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 and come with me and stand strong with me and Mr. Andre Smith. Mr. Smith, so what is what are you helping uh, Michelle Rush do as far as bringing this awareness to the situation? Like, and also your thoughts, role? too, about it, because you had strong thoughts about the detective energy that have been spent on this case, because you said 13 detectives were spent on Jesse, correct? Well, you know what? Uh, being on the radio yesterday, uh, detective... Um, text in and he corrected that actually it was 24 wow, wow. 24 detectives been following the Jesse Smollett case yes 24 crazy. detectives wow 24 Woo. so so let me give you a quick history of who Andre Smith is uh, I started my activist in during the time of Girl X in Kagrini mm-hmm. Green. I was a role manager of three Chicago police officers called the Slick Boys. And we went around the country teaching education on incarceration. Then later on, I created an organization called Chicago Against Violence. Um, so I spent 27 years standing over mothers and fathers who lost their children to this gun violence. So unless you dare, you really don't understand the pain. So now seeing the Jesse story because of uh, who he is, um, and it was not a stab wound, it was not a gunshot, and it was not a murder. It was a, a, a false assault. Uh, but it warned it uh, 24 detectives and taxpayers' money and resources, you know, that we don't get on the west side or the south side of Chicago in the black community. So I'm a little bit disappointed because I see without doing any investigation, I see that there is a form of um, um, Bias, neg- neglect. Yeah. Right. Neglect. Um, and, you know, they service the white community and the rich community, but when it comes down to the black community it's on the whatever. south and west side, right. our murders go unsolved. They tell us doing candidate forms, you know, we the, the, they tell us that they don't have enough detectives. And we start buying into that. So we start fighting for more resources for detectives. Then they tell us that our cameras are broke. But it's not the same. And we're living in the same city. It's not the same up north. Their camera's working. Downtown camera's working. On the south side and west side, the camera's not working. Um, we don't have detectives on the south and west side for murders. They have... 24 detectives for a false assault. So I'm looking to do a class action lawsuit, and I'm asking the mothers and the fathers that lost their children to gun violence that has not heard anything from a detective, it's time out for them to treat our community like that. We live in one city, but it's a separation up north, the white and rich, and the blacks. 
black community do not get the same treatment nor the same service. Right. So we need to file for a discrimination lawsuit. Who allowed these detectives to and who assigned these detectives when it come down to murder cases? Right. Mm. I want to ask a question to you, Mr. Smith. Um, the trauma, the whole trauma center issue. Now, I, I grew up. We all know the story of Ben Wilson. Yes. When he got shot, it was the yes. same instance yes. that if there had been a trauma center on the south side, he probably would still be here Correct. Yes. today. Yes. What I thought they enacted and put laws in place to start either building trauma centers or getting stuff closer for gunshot victims then. What happened with that and what is the difference between that and what happened with her son? Well, I, I say this. The difference is absolutely nothing. And it's the same old, same old in the black community. They tell us that we don't have the resources or they tell us that, you know, there's a broken system. But when it come down once again to downtown, up north, to the rich or, or, or the well-off, they get the service. All of us pay taxes. Yes, sir. We don't get the service on the south and west side in the black community, and we're demanding now that um, somebody answer the question and give us the information on how these detectives are assigned these cases. Right. Well, let's do this. I mean, I know we got to wrap up. We want to thank you guys for coming out for your yeah. time today. But I do want to put it out there for anybody that wants to reach out to you how all you? and join the cause that you guys are pushing for right now. How can they reach you? Well, um, you can reach us and join us uh, and be a part of this class action lawsuit against the city of Chicago. You can call my number. My personal number is 773-668-9210. That is 773-668-9210. And Sheila, you can give your number as well. Okay. My number, uh, my, my information is 773 414 8145. All right. We thank you guys for thank coming you. up today. Uh, Andre, Andre Smith, keep the fight going. And of course, Michelle Rush, man, we feel for you. We're sorry for your loss. And we hope that, you know, the things that you're fighting for come to fruition today. And, you know, and, you know sometimes God works in mysterious ways because the thing with Jesse Smollett, we cannot ignore what you just said. Like we have evidence of, you know, because I always stood by the sense of they don't have witnesses. But we didn't have a witness in this case either. They use our camera work and researches. So we know that they can actually solve cases without a witness. Young lady, I just want to say I'm proud of you that you're even standing here fighting the fight because my family, I lost a family member. My wife lost her brother, wow. and to watch, to so to see what you go through, I, I, I've experienced it firsthand. So for the fact that you even standing here fighting the fight so someone else doesn't feel that pain, I commend you for that. Tell Thanks, Thank you guys Absolutely. for having me so thank much. Thank you all. The best to you both. Uh, you. Mr. Andre Smith, Miss Sheila Rush, thank you all. Thank, thank you. you all. Yeah, because that's.